In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this photo into this using Luminar. On this channel, I share tips and tricks from over 12 years working as a professional photographer to help you improve your photography and photo editing skills. So if that's something you're interested in, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything in future. Now let's get into our edit. Okay, we're going to start with this image here, which is Hotel Vela in Barcelona, the Sale Hotel. And the first thing we want to do, as with any architecture, is just straighten up our verticals. So let's come over here to the Canvas tab and we'll come into Lens and Geometry. We're going to defringe, uh, which is always a good option, but more importantly in this one, we want to work with our verticals. As well as making sure that we've got our vertical straight on the building itself, we also want to pay attention to the trunks of the trees because they obviously grow vertically as well. So I think everything's parallel and that's the first step you want to do. Once you've got everything parallel, then we can actually rotate the image. Any type of adjustment here in this geometry section is gonna leave us with some gray area around the canvas. And to fix that, all we need to do is come into the crop section and I'm gonna choose a four to five crop, which is what Instagram likes to use. And then we just need to bring this in so that we're emitting any of those gray dead pixels around the edge. And once we've got our crop as we want it, we can just click and drag to frame things up. And I'm happy with that. And that's just excluding this little tree nubby out from that bottom left hand corner um, and everything else is looking good. We've got our um, bright highlight pretty much running down this third line here so we're happy with that we'll just click done when i'm creating these high contrast black and white architectural shots i really need to have control over the highlights and the shadows of the image and that's not always easy to do without creating specific masks you may have seen in the last video where i created this image I actually spent a lot of time using the pen tool in Photoshop to mask out the planes of the architecture. But we don't have the option to do that in Luminar, so we need to create a little bit of a hack, a little bit of a workaround to do that. So let me show you how we do that. Come over to the layers section, and we're just gonna add a new layer, a new adjustment layer, and this adjustment layer is gonna be where we control the highlights. But we need a nice, punchy mask that's going to enable us to just talk straight into those highlights and brighten them up in relationship to the rest of the image. We're going to do that using a luminosity mask. Now stay with me here guys, this sounds complicated but it's well worth learning this technique that I've sort of developed. So we're going to create a high contrast version of this image in black and white. So let's come to the essentials tab here and from here, let's come into the black and white conversion and just click convert to black and white. And what we can do is actually pull down the blues, which is uh, a lot of the image, the sky, we're gonna darken that, the cyans as well. And then, now we're gonna come into the light section and let's uh, play with the contrast, just so we're really darkening down the dark areas and brightening the highlights. So let's have a little play around here and see what we can create. If we open the advanced settings, we can also talk straight into the whites and brighten those up and push the blacks down. And what I'm doing at the moment is just creating an image that I can use purely as a mask, nothing more, a mask only. So when we create this as a mask, it's only gonna be the white pixels and the light gray pixels that are going to be affected by any changes we make to a layer. So come into the layers again, come to edit mask and we're gonna choose luminosity mask click it and Luminar calculates the mask based on our brightness values and it's as easy as that and now we've got this layer with this mask over it we can actually just hide this layer knowing that we're going to come back and work on that shortly so now we'll go back to our base layer and we'll make the adjustments we want to to convert this to a nice punchy black and white before I make any adjustments, I'm going to leverage uh, the AI accent tool. And I think that's a really good thing to do. Also structure, we can push this quite far, be quite um, brutal with this. And that's purely because this is architecture. Now I don't want anything quite as crunchy as this, but what I'm gonna do is actually create another mask here. And I am just gonna paint this effect in over the building. And if I want to make my brush slightly bigger, I'll just use the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes the brush bigger and the left bracket key makes it smaller. And I just don't, I don't really wanna go over the trees or the sky and uh, apply that structure effect to that. Um, I don't mind if we bleed over a little bit on around the edges, that's fine. 
and we're just going to bring this back just a little bit but if I turn this actual effect off and on you'll see that that mask that we created is only affecting that area on the building we're going to come into black and white conversion and just click the convert to black and white and just as we did when we were creating the mask we're actually going to reduce the blues just so that we're creating something with a little bit more uh, contrast a little bit more interest so now let's have a look at our before and our after and that's our black and white conversion now we can come back into this light panel here and just have a play with some of these sliders just to see if we can't increase the contrast and make this just a little bit more visually interesting I'm going to add a vignette which as you know will just darken the edges down uh, you can brighten the edges but for my effect that I'm going for here I want to darken things down and I'll normally be quite aggressive with the amount slider particularly to start with just because that helps you visualize exactly what you're doing with the with the vignette so as I change the roundness for example you can see exactly the effect that it's having and I normally like to feather the effect quite heavily uh, it just helps with that transition from light to dark and keeping things nice and smooth for this one I'm not going to worry about the inner light um, but that's lovely that Luminar has that as an option not many uh, photo editors have that and here I'm just easing the amount back off just a little bit so if I turn that off and on you can see that our attention is now drawn more to that central part of the image because I'm sure you guys know this but the brightest part of the image is where the viewer's eye will go so if you darken the edges that really helps to control the viewer's eye and drag them into the middle part of the photo and if we want to choose the subject area we can actually click where we want the focus to be and I really love that uh, feature within Luminar that's great as you know at any point you can look at your before and your after just so you get a sense of the direction that your photo is heading in um, and that's really nice you've also got the slider tool here as well which is really good one thing I would like to do is actually introduce a different sky that isn't just a plain and flat so we come over to the creative tab here and the AI sky replacement as you guys may well know this tool is just fantastic at quickly dropping in alternative skies into your imagery and bam it's dropped something in there and this is a long exposure cloud shot where the clouds are moving in the background we could play around with the settings here just to improve uh, the actual transition and masking of this but what you can also do is you can come to edit mask and if the effect is applied somewhere you don't want it like over here on the building we can actually just paint this out let's change our opacity to 100% so it has full effect and if you feel you want to have just some of the effect you could drop the opacity to somewhere around 50% and just remove the sky effect from that one area I like that so now we've got um, a fairly low key pretty neutral gray kind of rendition of our original image and now what we're going to do is use that layer that we created before with the mask we'll turn that on and straight away you see that big white line down there that's because our adjustments are as they were before when we actually created the mask so now let's come in we can actually just sort of reset these by clicking these little arrows um, on anything that we actually made a change to and now we're free to start again and fine tune those highlights and what I want to achieve by playing with the highlights is just brighten them up and increase the contrast but the reason we're doing this on a separate layer is we have more control over where we're applying that contrast because we've already masked out this strip here the W we are only applying any effects that we're adding to this adjustment layer specifically to those areas so let's see what we can do I certainly want to protect the highlights so dropping this down allows us to brighten things up whilst not blowing out all the detail um, the AI structure may also help with that so let's uh, introduce some of that there we go we have still got the detail in the windows here on this on this side if we want to we could brighten this even further so maybe let's bring the whites up so I'm quite pleased with how things are heading but I actually want to darken this image off even more so that these highlights we've created really pop out and to have maximum control I'm going to create myself another new layer so I'll click the plus icon here add new adjustment layer and let's just darken things up a little bit so we can come in drop the exposure down and I'm also going to bring the highlights down and the whites as well now I'm not worried about the fact that we're losing a lot of information and contrast in and around this area because I'm going to paint this mask out 
so that it only affects areas that I want it to. I'm going to use a little bit of reverse structure. So I'm actually going to put the structure slider to the left. And can you see how that kind of starts to blur everything out? That's actually what I'm wanting because I want to defocus our attention from the periphery of this image, sort of around the trees here, and then just leave our attention on the centerpiece of the architecture itself. So what do I mean by that exactly? You'll see as I start to edit this mask, and we're going to raise the mask. So let's make our brush nice and big so that we can do this fairly quickly and easily. And let's put this up to 100%. And as we paint here, we're going to remove that effect from the building itself. So that's pretty rough and ready, but let me show you. That's without the effect that we just created, and that's with. So our viewer's eye is going to this area of the architecture. We can still see all of the trees and the periphery around it, but our attention is very much on the architecture with this layer turned on. And if we want to soften that transition, which I recommend you doing so that things are just a little more seamless, we can come into this mask drop down here, just grab the feathering, which is basically blurring the edges of our mask, and we can just adapt that ever so slightly so that things are just a little bit more seamless there. And we could totally leave things there, but because this is Luminar and I love playing around with the creative tools inside of it, I'm going to create myself another layer. And this one is purely for creative adjustments. So let's come into the creative tab and let's have a look at dramatic. If I push that all the way to the right, you can see exactly what it's doing. It's really creating a high contrast look. That's far too much for me, but maybe we'll dabble just a little bit of that in. I really like using mystical as well because that adds a nice soft kind of glow to things. And as long as we keep it with the amount relatively low, the effect can be subtle enough that people don't really notice it, but it does give your images a nice feel. And now we can say we're done and we can come to my favorite part, which is the before and the after. We've got our before, which is a relatively nice capture, and boom, we've got a really impactful black and white conversion there. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, please go ahead, leave me a like. If you're unsure of anything, leave me a comment below and I will get back to you. That ability to add a luminosity mask to control specifically the brighter or the darker areas of an image is just so powerful, and I really encourage you to master that skill and add it to your editing arsenal. Now, my question to you is, what would you like to learn in Luminar. If you've got something specific that you're struggling with or something you'd like to know more about, leave me a comment and I'll see if I can make a video dedicated to you. If Luminar is your thing, guys, you might like this playlist here, which will help you get up and running. Also, I've got this video here that you might like. And if you're enjoying the channel, why not subscribe? Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next video.